What's up, rogues? So in season five, the flurry skill did get some nice buffs, but in season six, it's getting double damage, which is pretty cool. The gameplay, just as a heads up, is on season five, but I want to have this build ready for you guys. And while I was playing, a lot of people asked me for the build. So let's go ahead and do some gameplay. You are capable of doing tier eight, but I really feel like tier seven is the most optimal way, but I just want to go and show you guys that you can do it. But let's go ahead and do some gameplay of tier seven because that is the more optimal way to farm. Plus it makes the build a little bit more snappy until season six, because in season six, we get double the chance of flurry to essentially do its damage more times. Now there is an optional thing that if you want to tempt on you can it's optional but there is also a flurry size that you can get which does increase your aoe which can increase your lethality in the speed but for starters let's go ahead and go over the build and i'll explain all of the choices as that is pretty important here so first off what is the difference between this and let's say the pen shot or the barrage and dariel builds that you may have already seen the thing is is that this one is melee it is significantly tankier and it has infinite teleports so that's the pros and the cons compared to barrage it is going to be faster because barrage has a limit on how many targets that it can hit and ricochet to whereas flurry think of it like a giant circle of death no matter how many enemies there are you will hit all the enemies inside however size that you decide to temper on your uh, amulet or even in your pants or your boots you can all get increased flurry size in those departments and it's up to you if you want to get it. do you really need it you know to be honest it's again up to you you can lose out on some damage if you do do that because then you don't have the chance to apply like the stun, the freeze, which will activate more damage with let's say the creeping death aspect. So it's kind of a up to you sort of a thing. But uh, as far as bossing goes, you don't need the tempers for the bossing unless you really want to try to hit like all three at once, which it's actually something that you can do. So for starters, as far as the skills go, this is what I personally had the most fun with. So poison trap will activate your subterfuge skill, which will generate the umber crux totem. If you want to use that for the bosses, I do like that specifically on bosses but uh, poison trap will also be another source of a multiplier uh, with the paragon board it is still currently bugged and uh, it just works with all damage even though it says crit damage only with enemies affected by your trap now the reason why i like poison trap over caltrops is kind of like frequently asked question is while the enemy is taking taking damage they are still considered affected by the trap which is the poison so what happens a lot of times with caltrops is the enemy may just move away where if the poison trap is still taking on him you get more value but doesn't really matter you can run whatever one that you want to play and then obviously flurry this is going to allow us to teleport and activate our lucky hit chance and deal damage it also does apply vulnerability which is really cool with this build versus let's say the barrage or pen shot which you still have to apply vulnerability in some sort of a way we also run poison imbuement and we activate this for one of the uh nodes on the paragon board which gives us just more poison damage and then you can run anything that you want here i just happen to have an extra slot so dark shroud could be okay you can run smoke grenade you can run concealment it's kind of up to you you do definitely want to have some sort of source of breaking crowd control so shadow step is by far my favorite and then i also like to run dash mixing in both of these allows me to have an agility skill to kind of just use for extra mobility plus i just feel like it makes the build feel a lot more smooth but these last three are all optional the rest of them i would say you kind of need to play as far as specialization goes we are running inner sight because we're going to be attacking super super fast so it really helps out with the resources as far as the itemization it is an andariel's build so of course you need andariel's if you do not have this you can still play regular flurry we already have the build guide and i'll link it down below as well but i really think that this is pretty much the best melee rogue in the game i've tried twisting blades now i also tried twisting blades with and without andariel's and daryl is just simply going to give you way more damage now there comes to a point where you're dealing so much damage that you may not need to run andariel's we'll have to wait and see what happens with season six if they decide to really make andariel's nerf because what is happening that's pretty big in season season six is we are losing a lot of our item power and all these numbers are getting kind of shrunk down as far as we're aware of uh, as the mythic uniques with andario's damage that didn't get changed so all of our other multipliers that go up on the paragon board we're getting up plus 100 points and Dario's could just be the best thing in the entire game it currently is the best rogue build no question about it any variant of andario's is top tier right now and it's going to be probably even better when we get the buff that is coming out later today with the uh, ptr so uh yeah and Dario's is going to be something that a lot of people will be wanting to run uh, a lot of builds will be running it for sure again as long as nothing gets changed so andario's you need this for your helmet and then uh Tyrells is excellent by the way another thing to note here 
you can uh, masterwork attack speed, but there comes to a point where you may get too much attack speed. Keep in mind, uh, this is in category one. You will actually b break the category one uh, speed with this build very, very easily. Uh, you can get about 190, or if you get really good masterworking on alchemic uh, alchemical advantage, you can get literally 200% attack speed in this build. I currently have 190 right now. Uh, I just needed to get the two more master workings on my alchemic advantage to really make this build even uh, better. But uh, yeah, we're running Tyrael's over here, uh, and then you want damage reduction on that, or maximum resistance, that's another good thing to masterwork. Fist of Fate, masterwork getting that lucky hit chance, because this whole build is based off of lucky hit chance. And then we have the Umbers aspect, it's like in every single build. Now again, remember, on the pants and the boots and the amulet, you can temper on flurry size if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, Either way, you get more damage because if you have a chance to freeze, you know, you're getting the uh, frigid finesse, you're getting all of that bonus damage anyways. It's up to you what you want to. I have it on, uh, I think, one or two pieces in the gameplay here. I didn't even get any, like, good mass working. You can only go up to 100, by the way, uh, percent increased size. But, uh, yeah, you, you can get it. It's up to you if you want to or not. And then uh, getting Noxious Ice, just like any poison build here. They're running Accelerating, so we get even more attack speed. And right now, the other weapon temper, until we get the Flurry one, Poison Trap duration is okay, but it doesn't really matter that much. And then we are, are going to be running uh, Creeping Death over here, Starless Skies for resource cost reduction. And then we still want to run one of the aspects for Flurry. Even though it gives us Flurry damage multiplier, we don't care about that. We want Flurry to hit in a circle. That way, we're hitting things from the back as well. Really great. Great stuff indeed and then a lot of the offensive tempers you want damage per dark shroud you can get damage for crowd controlled as well and then if you really want to you could run close quarters but it is kind of unnecessary here then you get more value out of momentum because that that key passive is like one of the best things in the entire game and then you have kind of an open slot you can run intercom you can run whatever thing you can run elements up to you if you want to run another unique by all means go for it Ashuras can also break the attack speed cap so if you really want to try to push to get that 200 percent attack speed go for it but you are losing out on the damage over time and then also damage per dark shroud but hey if you really want to attack as fast as possible go for it it actually will give you good dps uh, but you just lose out on some survivability also because you get like max life as well um but uh that that weapon i believe also has crit and lucky chance so it's really not that bad anyways doombringer is in almost every one of my builds i love this item so much because it allows you to if you want to uh in your armors throw in emeralds which will give you way more dexterity which is you know obviously good more damage here and then uh since you don't have the Harlequin, you just throw in skulls and then you're going to be armor capped and this will give you all your resistance cap. Uh, as far as the gems go, there's really nothing important here other than you run Amethyst and then if you really need extra life, you can run the rubies. And then as far as the skill trees go, let me go ahead and make this bigger for you guys. Uh, as far as the skill tree goes, the first two points do not matter. We only need one point in a flurry. We don't need siphoning strikes. Uh, if you want to, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but we have Andariels. It's going to give us a enough healing. I mean, watch my HP. If I ever take damage, we just go right back to the full. Uh, because, well, Andariels is Andariels. And then we uh, run flurry over here. And then I really like having extra agility. Uh, so we run... Uh, uh, discipline shadow step over here uh both of the agility skills i like to just put one point into each just because i want them to have the highest uptime over here this one's up to you this is at the end of dash you get to knock down the surrounding enemies which uh it, we're not really here for the damage it just applies to crowd control so that helps or you can run a methodical i think both are good it's up to you this more damage this gives you more uptime play play both like Try them out, see which one you enjoy. Uh, I think for the ga this gameplay, I, I was kind of swapping things up uh, to try to test out. And both of, both of these are viable. And then, obviously, Dark Shroud, you max that out. And then you want the heal one because we don't really need the crit. But if you really need the crit, uh, because crit is going to activate your Dark Shroud generation, but you attack so fast in this build, it probably isn't even necessary. You, you'll get crit anyways because of just your Fist of Fate, as well as your rings and the base. And you also get a bunch just by, you know, your Paragon board. Because I believe Strength uh, gives the rogue uh, extra crit. And then we have Agile over here. Uh, this can be completely removed just for extra survivability, but there's really extra points in this build. So do what you want to. Then we run Poison Trap. Poison Trap is going to give us more poison damage over here. Then we take all the poison nodes. So this is what you want to get on your amulet. This is the most important thing. Alchemic Advantage. It gives you Lucky and Attack Speed. This Attack Speed is in Category 2, so it can break the cap of um, 100. So this is how you would get 200. It's getting this to get, uh, I believe you need like 7 ranks to get it. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, your uh, Accelerating will also give you another 50% Attack Speed, which is great. 
And then we have Frigid Finesse over here, which is kind of normal in every single rogue build. And then we just get all of these just so we can get extra resource. This, you can kind of drop it if you feel like your resources are okay. And then also Second Wind can give you extra survivability. And then we don't really need to take any of these, but if you want to and you want extra movement speed, this is fine. But I usually feel like in most of the melee rogue builds, you can drop it completely. And the reason why is because momentum is the most OP thing, I think, in the entire game. Uh, so all of these get multiplied uh, because you can get each of these uh, stacks up to 10 times. So basically that's 30% damage reduction, 30% maximum energy, 30% energy regeneration, 30% movement speed, and 50x damage. <laughs> like, th there's no class that really compares to this. I mean, the, the boss kills are actually really good. I, I know I kind of, oh, it, it melted so fast. The boss kills are great for any Andariel's build, though, uh, to be real. But if you are doing the higher ones, like this is a, an 8 over here, it may take a little bit of time. And again, remember, we're getting way more DPS when the new patch does drop for this. This is more so something that I was building and people wanted to build and I'm like, okay, you know what? It's good enough already right now. And again, in season six, uh, it's going to be even more powerful, even though, let's be honest, everyone's going to be playing the new class in Season 6, but I'll still probably build a lot of different Andariel variant builds. Uh, but if you can drag the uh, the bosses and also swap to an Umbercrux, that can actually increase the DPS for the bosses, but it will take a little bit of time on the bosses. It's not like a 10-minute boss fight, but don't expect to be a 5-second one. Alright, anyways, next up, Paragon Board. So as far as the Paragon Board, I like running Fluidity, and then we are going to go into uh, Exploit uh, weakness with tracker we are also going to be running cunning shreds and bane then we go into devious here i like this damage reduction from the elites so i grab all of these nodes over here but cheap shot devious then we get lyrana's instinct with control and then we go into eldritch bounty with canny and we get this and then we also get deadly ambush there is an option if you want to uh, remove some of this damage to crowd control and if you want to drop some of the elite damage reduction you can still actually get some extra survivability if you want to fit in another uh, glyph here you can run turf or um uh i think it's closer actually uh, one of them gives you damage uh, let's go to edit right here um so there are a couple different options here if you want uh to actually add exploit into the build that's fine uh it'll just apply it 100 percent of the time but flurry actually does apply it already that's why i don't run uh, exploit in the ring but i think it's either turf or uh, closer. So turf is uh, damage reduction against close enemies and close targets. Okay. So you want turf instead. There's another one called closer. It, it almost reads the same, but this one only increases cutthroat while this one increases close targets. So you want the close targets because remember, you, you don't care about your cutthroat damage. All you care about with this build is specifically the um, damage with Undarls. So that's the only thing that matters. You don't need to put multiple points into flurry, but pretty much this is, uh, I'll fast forward like another like 20, 20 seconds or something. And you can see that, uh, yeah, you can you can do all to your content. You can see this is wave 10. It's like, uh, what are we, 800? It'll be like a 900-ish run. But keep in mind, the runs will vary. You're not always gonna guarantee to get this amount. But again, I always suggest you guys, and I see sometimes in the comments of other people's builds, not only mine, where people are looking at why you're doing tier seven instead of tier eight. The reason why is you get way more aether uh, in most situations when you do one tier lower, and that is because it is more efficient to farm. Just like if you're pushing in the pit, don't try to push 150 every single time. If you do 101s in two minutes versus like a 10 or 15 minute run, you get more bang for your buck. But anyways, that's going to go and wrap it up. And uh, again, what makes this build like different, if you guys wanted to know like, is it better to play this or pen shot for me? I've always said pen shot is my favorite and I think it is objectively the better version of any rogue variant right now, with the exception of Barrage beating it slightly in the boss department by just a little bit but i would say that this is pretty much uh, a best melee rogue build so if you like that play style and this build is definitely going to be more tanky than pen shot but with pen shot i mean you literally knock down the enemy so they can't hit you but this does give you 30 percent extra damage reduction and like the, the amount of stuff that you get on momentum just like 200 percent movement speed it does make the build feel really good so it's up to you play what you want to if you want like you know, my personal opinion on which one is the best, because again, it gets asked all the time. I just saw your pen shot build. Should I build this one instead? I, I say pen shot is going to be, for most people, that one will feel way, way snappier, because you sometimes you just shoot once or twice, and the whole screen gets, like, deleted, because you have all these splits. With this one, you will have to, it's a melee build, but it's a teleport melee build, so... It is quite nice to be able to teleport towards your targets, and if you do need resource cost reduction, there's another node that you can grab, but uh, choose what you want to. Uh, again, if you like a melee play style, this one is obviously going to be better than Twisting Blades, as Twisting Blades, it just has a really slow wind-up time. You have to impale, then it has to pull out, but Twisting Blades is also getting another buff. It's just kind of up to you on uh, what you want to play, but Andaro's definitely going to be top tier in Season 6 going forward if things don't change, but uh, I will update you guys with another variant of this build if we do need to. Keep in mind, we are getting 100 more pair 
Paragon points, and on top of that, we are getting 10 more skill points, and I will be updating all of my builds. It'll just take me some time, just like all content creators. Uh, it's going to take us some time to kind of uh, make it on the build website and keep mind sometimes they change things so who knows when the updates will come out anyways uh, as far as like on the build planners to be accurate and the reason why I say that is because what happened last season is I edited all my builds and then what happened is all the tempers and a lot of the things since Blizzard deleted some of them these all got shifted and then like on my like melee build I had like barrage things and people were like what the heck why do you have barrage and it's like these things got moved because of the build websites they remove certain things because Blizzard removed them because they added them in and they removed them. So uh, I'll update uh, via the notes here. So check out like like most of my videos. There's a, usually a bunch of different notes if you want to try out other variants and stuff. And I will put some notes in here. Like if you want to swap to Umber Crux, if you want to play Caltrops. Like I usually put certain things here that are important. But it, on the temper specifically, yes, you want to in season six and on the PTR if you're going to try out this build in the PTR because I'm going to try it out on PTR because it's double damage. Uh, it's going to be a very fun thing to mess around with when we get Flurry can hit twice, which is way better than it doing double damage. Some skills, by the way, in season six get double damage and some get to activate two times. Two times way better because lucky hit chance is going to be just superior uh, for a lot of the resource generation of these other things. Anyways, that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on. And you can still play this build, by the way, in Season 5. Like, I, I already showed you guys. This is Season 5 gameplay. In Season 6, it's going to go way, way, way higher in DPS. But subscribe if you're new, and I'll update you guys in the future. And we'll be cooking up a lot more builds in Season 6. And pretty much everyone's going to be playing the Spiritborn. So more Spiritborn stuff very soon. Anyways, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Check the pin, and we'll have all the things that you need.